Stefan Rust, again, coming back on the show. I want to say this is, I think, our third or fourth visit. I can't remember, but welcome back to the show, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. I think this is going to be our fourth one this time. So it's like great. Look, always exciting to be back with you, Rob. Thanks for having me. Yes, and for some reason, we like everybody likes to have you back because for some reason, this thing called inflation just kind of sticks around, pun intended. So what I want to talk to you about today was there's uh, some advancements that you guys got on the, on the website, trueflation.com, 100% free website. There's some upgrades going on, and I wanted you to walk us through that. Yeah, no, love to, love to. We, the team's working hard, constantly adding new data points, uh, filtering through the data itself. It's really um, challenging. We've upgraded our systems as we then get into V4, which is the decentralization of the systems. And we're now running V3. I think on Monday or Tuesday, we'll have completed the final transition of all that data onto V3 from a back end. So this is the stuff nobody sees. But without this, we can't present the stuff that you see on the front end. Um, and we'll be and so some of the changes um, have, have had a significant impact. Perfect. So let's get into some of the changes. I mean, as far as graphically and the graphical representation of what's happening. The first thing I notice when I go to Trueflation is I get this. Yeah. U.S. inflation rate aggregated, which is a little bit different from when I usually come in and it takes a look at just like the basic U.S. inflation rate, which is going straight down. Yeah. So, again, when I'm taking a look at this, and I thought it was genius because when we take a look at the CPI numbers, inflation numbers, this is what we usually see. And again, of course, everybody, this is Ben's website and the Cryptoverse links in the description, 10% off the first month you care to sign up. But this part right here, this is what everybody hears about. Okay, the CPI, the, the inflation year over year. We started up here roughly 9%, a little bit over a year ago. And we keep hearing these reports about how inflation is going down and it sounds fantastic. We're like, this is good. And we go up a little bit and everybody kind of says, well, not too bad because we're only at, you know, whatever, whatever percentage we at, 3.7%. Yeah. But if I take a look at here for the aggregate, aggregated data, it looks like I'm going the exact opposite. What are we looking at here, Stefan? So what we're looking at here is we, we saw that same view and we constantly got feedback from our community that, you know, this is not reflective. Prices aren't coming down. Prices aren't coming down. What do you mean it's, it's only 2.6% or 2.4% according to our numbers right. where inflation's at, right? And it's like, how can you say that? And it's like, actually, what we're saying is that the prices are still going up. But they're only going up 2.4% as a percentage over last year. So take the price that was there last year mm -hmm. and see how much more expensive that same item is compared to last year. And then what we've been told is actually, no, 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 you can't do that, right? So what we've then gone back and said, let's have a look at how we calculate this and how we present this. Okay. And so what we've said is we got to aggregate the pricing because in essence, not only are you paying... 2% more this year over last year, last year you're paying 10% more than you paid the previous year, which you're paying 8% more. So if you add all of that up, all of a sudden mm. you're paying 23% more for the all your items across all your baskets, uh, your basket of consumption. Um, and that's how much more you're paying. So that's a hidden tax of 23% that people are paying or a loss in income of 23% or a reduction in purchasing power of 23%, whichever way you look at it, that's yeah. ultimately what we've come to. And if you look at the data, here we do it not only year on year anymore, we've then looked at this month over last month and then just pulled all of that together across each of the months and added that up to where we are at 23.47% now. This makes a lot of sense. I can, yeah. I can see now why the Fed is just so so adamant about getting us down to this this 2% level cuz i mean it's going to go up and if you think about like 2% well it's not too bad 3% but it compounds over time yep. and we're all losing this purchasing power as time goes on i i, I got to tell you when i took a look at this i'm like holy smokes this is a lot of money that we're losing and then i don't know if you want to jump all the way to this but you guys did this personalized inflation calculator if you could walk yep. me through this one yeah, so we did this personal calculator, and, and the reason why is everybody has different spending patterns. Everybody has a different income. And so what we wanted to do was how do I now personalize my expenses? I spend money different to the average household. 
um, or the panel that, and, or the census data that Truflation uses. So yeah. what is it for me, right? How does it impact me? And so we just wanted to show um, people how it actually impacts you personally, show you your inflation rate and how much in terms of monthly dollar numbers you are losing and what you need to do to make that make up for that. And how, more importantly, do you hedge that? Today, it's a very manual process. You have to unfortunately put everything through in there manually. And yeah. it's a bit tedious because it's a bit like a tax form. Uh, but we're changing that. We're going to give certain profiles of people. So it also automatically pre-populates it based on profiles. We're also going to enable the integration with credit cards, with um, uh, uh, with Expensify, with Zero, if you're a small, medium business. So you can not only do it as an individual or a household, you can also do it as a small, medium business if you'd like to. Cool. And then yeah. we, talk, we talked about this before, like you can see over here, like a year ago, <clears throat> uh, roughly a year ago, October 17th, you know, for the numbers I just put in, they were just, um, you know, made up, but that's an 11% increase I was spending a year ago. Now, yep. of course, I mean, things have gone up, but I'm, it's come down a little bit, but I yep. think it would be cool. And like we talked about this is if I could click on this and see how much I'm spending over here. It is, it, it really is eye opening how much we're, I mean, it is that silent tax. You're right. So if you're looking at, I mean, in this case, you've got an annual household income of 50,000. Yeah. You divide that by 12, you're looking at maybe what, 48,000, 45,000, 4,500, sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and what does that mean? Every month you're losing $100 in purchasing power, right? So actually you're walking away with $4,300 instead of $4,500 because you've got $112 that you've lost in inflation this month. And next month it's going to be more, right? Because it just compounds. Because next month the interest rates or inflation is going to go up. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, we just don't think inflation's going away. Uh, you know, just given the geopolitical situation, the issues with supply chain, the onshoring, um, that economies of scale are going to diminish, um, and, and as a result, supply chain. Uh, you don't need, you know, you can't leverage that. You're going to need to build out infrastructure to support that. And in order yeah. to support that, you, it costs you money with interest rates at the rate they are and takes time, you know. And so all of that's going to have a significant impact on inflation. And 3 to 5% is the new normal, not anymore 2%. We These should be a bit more positive, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's the truth. I mean, this yeah. is what, what's going on. So, I mean... I get that you guys built a, fa a fantastic foundation here. And of course, yeah. it's, it's most of this uh, all free, all this data that you have for free. But at some point, you got to keep the lights on. Yeah. So what's going on here as far as like, this is new. There's pricing here. Yeah. And there's also, it looks like some kind of token. What's happening? So we are, we're going to continue to make the website for free. We're still going to give it to users for free. We want people to be able to access this information and be able to use this as an educational platform. But yeah. for individuals that want to use a more detailed calculation, they want to use this for investment decisions. Yeah. We're going to ask them to subscribe to the data. At the moment, you can download the data and you can subscribe to the data. So if you scroll down, you also get the ability to subscribe to the data. Okay. Um, we're going to incorporate the download capabilities into the subscription capabilities and provide you with the ability to download three years of data um, and, and, and be able to customize the features, integrate your credit cards, store your history so you can then see where you're at and just tweak it as you need um, or have live integrations with your Expensify or Xero and, and, and thereby have significant value. Um, we've tried to monetize this in the last three months. We've been experimenting, asking the community. And what we've heard is, is I think they want that simplification just around subscription. So that's what we'll do. Um, yeah. Um, ultimately, we've been funding this out of our own pocket and out of some investors' pockets. So that's um, how we've been able to make this available. Well, I can see that. And then, of course, you guys have an enterprise solution. I'm yep. moving forward for the, for the big companies I can get it. So, and of course, like these are the big companies that I think will want to use this data as opposed to, because these are like the most up-to-date things. Now, yep. I think with the Fed, they kind of, they maybe look a little bit backwards. I think companies, enterprise, they want to actually look a little bit more forward. So I can, I, I get on top of that, but what's this then? 
you got the, uh, the, the token itself. How does this work? Yeah. Yeah, so we want to fund this and, and we want to we've been building a community around this. We've been working with data sources and data aggregators as partners in helping us you know aggregate 18 million items and have three price feeds for each of the items. Yeah. Um, and so how do we reward them? How do they get rewarded for working as hard as as they do to help make this become a reality? How do we work with and decentralize the data so it becomes, number one, censorship resistant, but also it stays up and running so you can't shut it down um, and it remains permissionless so anybody can upload data. Uh, so we've been focusing really how do we decentralize the storage of this data um, and put it on the blockchain so it becomes transparent and immutable. One of the things that we're seeing is governments are going back six months, as far as six months back, to change the data that they have been publishing and announcing publicly. And of course, it's like, oh, we changed the data, but it's on page 27 in short, you know, in small format, in the as a footnote, we changed the data. So nobody really sees it and nobody pays attention to it anymore because it's not frontline news. Um, and so that's why we believe that putting this on the blockchain is really important. How do we fund it and how do we give everybody participation in this is through a token. And so we've been working on our tokenomics mm -hmm. uh, to make this possible. And we will be having a, a listing for Truflation in the not too distant future. Um, and we're just working through the details, what it takes and waiting for the right time as well. Um, you know, there's not much liquidity in crypto at the moment. Um, so we're just waiting for the market to pick up a little bit and see when the right time is there. Well, I, yeah, this is not the right time. You got a good point there. Hey, so real quick, like with, with the token itself, like you got pricing over here, do you pay with that in the token or this is in dollars or can you do both? At the moment, it's in dollars. You can pay however you want. You can pay in crypto assets, you can pay in fiat assets, and you can pay in TFI. You'll get a discount if you pay in the TFI token. So that'll be discounted. Um, and all the participants that are building this utility uh, will have uh, will be rewarded for their work and their efforts to sustain the utility with the fees that are being paid. I, got, I can see why maybe your partners that, you know, is pulling data from you and you pulling data from them, maybe that would be what they do moving forward. Interesting yeah. concept. Yeah, I could see that. All right. And well, especially as more real world assets move on chain, um, we're going to see some sort of shift between at the moment, the power dynamics are definitely in the fiat world for real world assets. All the pricings are determined over there. But as they get tokenized, pricings are slowly going to shift on chain. And then ultimately, how do you blend the two together and then come up with an accurate price reflection between those? Um, that's going to be all about calculations, weightings, the right kind of indexing tools. Um, and the right presentations of that. And we think we've got a competitive advantage and a leadership role in that um, space to be able to really help people navigate and understand the intricacies associated with it. Oh, that's, you know, that's true. I never thought of it that way. Because, I mean, if you don't get the accurate data and you don't get the accurate numbers correct, then, of course, the people that are pulling these real world assets, they're like, well, this is you got one thing over here. We got one thing over here. This is some government data that we think is right, but we're not for sure. And now here's stuff that's actually on an immutable ledger. So maybe we'll just use this and we'll go yeah. with this. OK, that makes sense. All right. And you're making billions or trillions of, dis of, of investments based on the data that you've got. Do you mm -hmm. think it's better to have fresh daily updated data, more accurate reflection, where you have insights into the methodology, you have transparency associated with that data, and you're making investment decisions based on that, or you're making investment decisions between on stale data, it's, it's six months old, it gets edited back, it changes, you don't know, it's intransparent how it's calculated, it's in some nebulous fashion, uh, calculated in some nebulous fashion, um, we just think that, you know, you don't want to make investment decisions based on the latter data. You'd hopefully make it on the former data because ultimately that gives you the better insight and a compound that has a significant better impact. Well, and you know what? It's a good point. And it's something we talked about last time you were on here because people would, yeah. would tell me like, I'm not going to use Truflation because the Fed doesn't use Truflation. So why would I care about that? Yeah. I'm like, well, that is true. But if you want to see where things are actually going so far, Truflation has been pretty darn accurate. 
and then you've had uh, Danielle the Martino yep. Booth. Yep. She's pretty much saying, hey, they've been uh, correlated up to 0 0.97, which is pretty much a positive correlation. And I can see it. If you want to know where things are going, I think it's to take a look at this site. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, we've had a number of, I mean, we've had a number of hedge funds vet us. We've got a number of Wall Street entities, um, big firms that are, are household names, um, you know, um, especially, and then also big institutions that are household names equally so using our data. Um, and so they validated it and proved it. And what they actually prefer is not the actual data in terms of how we calculate it, but they're <laughs> actually looking to have our aggregated data volumes calibrated towards that of how we believe they um, institute the government, you know, is going to be announcing it. Oh, so shit. that gives them a lead time of maybe somewhere between three to six months ahead of where the government will be coming because we have fresh data, it's up to date, and it's using the similar methodology based on our assumptions and the based on what we see uh, just using fresh data. That's all. That's that's the only difference. That's a huge leg up. Stephen, yeah. you've said a lot of stuff in the last 10 minutes or so. I think I'm going to let everybody digest that and we'll have you back on when the next, uh, you know, let's have you back on when the next CPI stuff rolls out. Yeah. And then we can talk about it. Well, there's an FOMC meeting on, oh, I think it's November this. 1. Um, there are two more FOMC meetings this year, November yeah. 1 and I think December 13th. So um, maybe there's, we'll have some insights around that. So um, I will reach out to you when we get close to that time. And hopefully you'll have me back on. Let's do it. All right.